worship of war god. His priests, the most loyal followers, are known as war dead. You and the others of the faithful have been for generations continuing an underground movement to try to keep the old ways alive. The old ways include respect for the ways, languages, and teachings of the Eldar in the first form. Also, the elves in the common tongue of the Middle Earth. The faithful for centuries have been attempting to preserve the integration of the Eldar's culture and tongue in Numenorean society. More importantly is the continuation of respect and reverence for the Valar and the the Song of Arda, creation, and the ways and rules set down by them in the ages past. The previous king has repented of the previous king's arrogance, of the previous generations of king's arrogance, and their denial of all things Eldar, and he had re-embraced the old ways. But since Tar Palantir's passing, all has become far worse than ever before. On a side note, over the years, some have noticed that all the Druidai calling themselves Druv or Druvu, known in the common tongue as Wozens, have overcome their fear of the wide seas and left from the north for their old lands in Middle Earth, both singly and in small groups. There are not now known to be any left in the Recently, Kiratur, the leader of your group in this area of Middle Earth, has spread the word to the scattered teams in this area that he's received word from Lord Ellen. Lord of Andunier, and the leader of the Dunedai, telling everyone to try to find a passage off the island and flee to the north. Everyone in the area has been called to a special council meeting tonight to inform and to plan pensions are high. The omens coming out of Eleanor have been progressively worse. Meanwhile, our Ferrazol has been preparing his armada to assail Eleanor, the land of the Valar, the gods, who chose to take form on this world in ages past continue in Lumitar's song of art of the song of creation. It was the Valar who created and gave to men the gift of Numenor, in reward for their faithful service in battle against the war god his minions to evil to God's land. But with this one stipulation, that men could go anywhere in the world except out of sight to Numenor and the west, and not to ever try to set foot on the blessed realm of Valar. The line of men who accepted this gift and left Middle Earth long ago to come to this island of gift, now calling themselves Numenorean, also received the gift of exceptionally long life, especially those of the line of Elros. The early ones lived to near 500 years, and others living for three to 400 years, but the glory and longevity they once enjoyed has dwindled to a mere 203 years. Our Pharisol, the current king of Numenor, calling himself now in his twilight years, has become fearful of old age, taking his life that he enjoys, fearful of old age, taking his life that he enjoys so much. Most of the Numenorean population share the same fear of death now as well. Where in ancient days men accepted the gift of death by Illumitar only to men, that not even the Eldar may receive. Now the black Numenoreans now look on death as a doom and call the gift of death now the doom. They've become so obsessed with their fear of old age and death and the pursuit of immortality that they have allowed themselves to cling to the dark lords of the initially imprisoned cell, stating to our pharaohs on that if he and his people merely step foot on Valinor, they too will achieve immortality. They now believe, due to his poisoned words, that the only reason for the ban was the greed of the Valar wanting to keep the secret of immortality from men, keep men of lesser standing than the Valar of the Valar. The faithful have done all they can to try to slow the corruption and spread the truth, attempting to slow the growth of this evil and avert disaster. And those efforts have, alas, run their course and are nearly end. Now it is time to gather the few remaining faithful remaining on this island and flee without how to do so. All the ports large enough for seafaring vessels are closely watched and guarded by the people. Most of the population will not hesitate to turn in the faithful and anyone who needs them for the huge reward to all. Anyone not of Numenorean blood, and especially Elven, are at great risk of even seen. If captured alive, the faithful and those associated with them are immediately taken to the capital city of Amethyst. The dark temples created by Sauron. Then these prisoners are used in blood sacrifices to Morgoth, conducted by Sauron and his priests. Kiratur has called a council meeting that starts within the hour to try to decide how to address this challenge. 
All voices and ideas are welcome, but time is short. The plan is to begin the journey in the early morning hours and by land and by coastal ship to the rendezvous on the other side of this island. So that's the initial. You and over 20 others have all come to this urgent council meeting, the summons of the leader. The omens of the West have had everyone full of tension and fear, top of the seemingly tireless pursuit of the King's Bear. As has happened for some years now since Tarkelian announced his intention to go to the Undying Lands, the period of sunset unfolds dusk. Out of the West there comes a great cloud in the evening. Shades of were a great eagle with pinions spread to the north and the south. And slowly it looms up, blotting out the sunset, and then much most of the night falls upon the world. Some of these eagles of the lords of the west bear lightning beneath their wings, where thunder echoes between the sea and the Not long ago, the weather in Numenor used to be never apt to the needs and life of men. Rain in due season and ever in measure, and sunshine now warmer, now cooler, and winds from the sea. All those eagles. And when the wind was in the west, it seemed to many, that it was filled with a fragrance, fleeting but sweet, heart-stirring, as if flowers that bloom forever in undying meads and have no names on their shores, but no more. You have heard reports that these light beams have continued to increase over the years and have slain men upon hordes, and in fields, and in the streets of the city. Recently, word has reached your ears that a fiery bolt of lightning smote the dome of the temple founded by Saturn, and shore it asunder. And it was wreathed in flame, but the temple itself was unshaken, and Ziggler stood upon the pinnacle and defied the lightning. It was unarmed. And in that hour, the faithless man and the king's man called him a god, and ever since had been doing all that he requests, no matter how dark it was. Even more recently, the eagles of the Lord to the west came up out of the dayfall, and they were arrayed as for battle, advancing in a line, the end of which diminished beyond sight. And as they came, the wings spread ever wider, grasping and diminishing the sky. But now, instead of utter darkness, the west burns red and green behind them. And they glow beneath, as though they were lit with a flame of great anger, so that all of Numenor is now illuminated as with a smoldering fire. And when you look upon the faces of your fellows, it seems to you they are red. The council leader, Curator, is now stepping up onto the great stump of an ancient fellow tree. Uses a podium. The rest of you gather. It's been a heaviness of heart that I've called you here tonight. For I have got a message from my lord and then all this team and act upon as they are hard to express. Who among you? Who among us? not be held the wrath of the lords of the west, blotting out the evening skies with blood. Who has not heard the trumpet sound that the king of Numenor has set to go as he sets forth and said with his impious armada to make war on the divine power of the world. At this time you hear murmuring from others gathered about you about the foolishness, the pride, and misdirection of the king and his men. And that only evil can come of this. The murmuring continues. He raises his hands for silence. Nearly a month has passed since that great fleet set sail. And if it does not come to grief, they will assuredly set foot on the shores of the Undying Lands, that hallowed soil whereupon no mortal may set foot without destruction for all. There is one loyalty above all others that no man can forswear. And that trust, that allegiance, the king of New World is abandoned to our destruction. Hear then the words of my lord of Endor, delivered to me by the hands of Fireval, the eagle of Manwe, the last that shall ever alight upon these Julian shoulders. So speaks Helen. To all who keep faith with the God, friendship with the Elder, and do will unto all free peoples. The days are dark, and there is no hope for men for the faithful of few. 
long and hard we have striven ever to avert the corruption of our own land. In vain, for that land is the fire. Now we shall lose all that we have loved, foretasting death in life. Go into exile, we know not where. And all choices in this hour are fraught with peril and danger. For you know well the charge that our enemies bring against us. We are traitors and spies, marked for death and destruction, should our purpose be discovered. Therefore I bid all who still call themselves the faithful or who are their friends to hasten to the haven of Romana. Here. There are gathered many vessels, seaworthy vessels such as can be mustered to bear us away from this fallen land. East or west, the Malar alone can say. Take only what you need to endure this journey, whether by land, coast, or river. Trust no one you do not already know to be true. There are many deceivers amongst us. Even those who have not bowed their knee to Sauron the deceiver, yet fear him, will not fail to betray us to the sacrificial fires of his priests. May the Valar protect you and keep you under the one bring you safely to us at Romana. So speaks Amendil, son of Amendil, Lord Vandun. We do not stand alone, not entirely. This council leader raises his hand and the figure steps out of the shadows. No one saw him standing near your feet to invite the speaker into the room. His dark, deep set eyes, now his brow, give him a menacing look, but his face is tranquil as he approaches the council leader, put their arms on each other's shoulders. This is Agar, one of the Druidah, our friends and allies of old. It is said that Agar's people have all left this island long ago. In their dreams and visions, they were troubled by premonitions of danger. Look, Valar had all come to pass. But one at least, Aga, has remained behind. For our sake, for the sake of us all. In his dreams, he knew to be guidance. That he's willing to provide us. So he shall accompany us with us to Roman. Here we are, in this cave, mountains of Andunia. We must travel ten days at least across Luminor, the bay of Roman, where our ships are. There may be other paths that we may take. We cannot foresee where the danger shall lie. At this point, the council leader steps down. And he's around you. Everyone is silent at first. And then very quickly, those around you start speaking up of different options. Where do we go? How do we go by land? What happened? The horses, all the horses we take out just a few days ago, a raid by the king's men, took out all of our horses, but four of us left. How can we get across my land? They, they guard all the <laughs> Our supplies, when they took the horses, they took most of our food supplies. How will we survive such a long journey? Worse yet, people don't know we can't turn to can I go to a farm and ask for somewhere to stay, for some food, for some farms? Will I have to give off land and get moved quickly enough to make it for a better food? Are the members of the Marlins wild foods? I'm asking the... Yes, there's, there's some foraging ability to be able to forage to some extent, but the, that's limited. Well, this, this is a Some of these are different. Wait a minute. We don't have supplies. We have our horses to take. A couple of stars. 
suggesting, well, why don't we take, we have a river crowd. Somebody else speaks up and says, well, we can only handle eight men. So why not eight of us take a river crowd down there and try to find some sort of coastal vessel so we can sail around. It's definitely got to be to try to walk on foot across the land. And I was like, well, that's over a thousand miles to go around versus a couple hundred miles. But maybe it would be swifter. Others are saying, well, what about the dangers of the seas? We heard recently, where it never happened in the past, that ships have actually become overcome by some of these storms and waves that come out of nowhere. They just travel by stones sometimes. Yeah, in skirts. In skirts. And that's the delta. What are, what, are you, what are the ones who first mentioned uh, uh, about rapture? Well, that's fine. I understand you dwarves not wanting to get on the water now. But I mean, how, how are you going to be able to keep up with us running anyway? I will see the ship. I will seek the ship. Which I said, 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 I understand, but why don't we take the ship all the way around and get those? In fact, maybe we can find a seaworthy vessel either in the head of the or in the head of the not that, if you would be like, are you crazy? There are not as many people here. Well, if we get a coastal vessel, we can sail down in just a couple of days, and then if we can seize one of the king's seaworthy vessels, I know most of them have sailed up, but I've heard reports that there are, there are a few that were left behind. Mm -hmm. the that is just what the king's men expect of us. Ship to sail all about the coast of the They will watch every vessel that is in the anywhere. We must go where they would not expect us. That is our only hope. But if cross, they're almost never to the north, though. The patrols will be right in on some of those voyages in the past. We do not know where their patrols will be. We do not know whether they know of our meeting today. There may be spies that will follow us wherever we go. So we must stay one step ahead of them. The pursuit has already begun. I say stick to land. More room to roam. Easier to hide. I say take my team by river craft. We can run. The seven of them and myself, we can fit on the boat and will handle us. We can go down by river. This is just another, another uh, uh, there's about 20 people here besides you guys. Right. He's another one of them. Okay. Uh, what's the hangout? You don't, you don't know. He's just part of the crowd. Oh, 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 us. Here in turn. Here in turn. The guy uh, I'm the leader. So, yeah, he's the leader. Oh, okay, that's who. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's the leader of this. Because it's not, no, I'm not the leader. The one who's talking about, yeah. Oh, the rivercraft. Not all of us. No, not a god. I'm not the other god. God's dead. He's still there. He's still there. I'm not saying the god who has said you will be our guide. What is your suggestion as to the god? I leave friend by land. Others choose their own fate. By land, we should go by land. Uh, be, be faithful. Safer. Be faithful. Do you know the paths that others might not go? Yes, safer paths. Uh, if you wander alone, lost, maybe you should be found. Okay. Okay. Druidine have seek, searched out the ways of this land for many generations. They know every rock, every tree better than we do ourselves. I say trust in our God. Let those who will go with you, Haras, to the sea, my boat. Okay, fine. You're with me, aren't you? Yeah, I'm with you. You're with me, right? We'll take the craft, then. You can take the horses. They'll be useless to us. How many are there, then, that will go by land? I shall go by land. Now, are those here? Eight? Alas, and seven will go by sea. So eight minus two. So let us. I must have actually recovered for something for a For all of my brothers. Yes, we should hear what the dwarves and the elf have to say. We be word of honor that. We, we, we should not speak of many of the, of the others. Uh, if you can capture them, we're in charge of them. The, the uh, looks at 
you I thank you, friend, for your consideration. We must not let go. We'll swear a like oath that we will not speak if we are captured. I wish you luck on your path. I swear it. Others can swear it. Die before they tear the world. And so shall we unite with you. Romana. 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 There's still more discussion. We need to figure out equipment, supplies, which we can get by. Start. We can start working that out. This goes on for a few minutes, We're trying to discuss getting four horses. Two of them can use the pack horses, two can be used for scouts. They'll ride ahead and make trouble. People are trying to figure out who's going to ride the horse. All this discussion is going on. A uh, guard comes running in, who wasn't here before, comes running in, just panting out of breath. Come in, what news? Kingsmen, over 50 of them on the way. Where? Less than two hours from the east, from the canyons. Can we make the bridge? I don't think we can make the bridge, but we might be able to make the hills just north of there and hide there while they pass. We shall have to begin that way. I'll, uh, I'll go get the horses. We must leave sooner than we expected. The pursuit has already begun, I fear. We are in a country that offers concealment. With the gun's help, we should be able to evade, evade that pursuit for the moment. That is the part. It's going to take everybody about half an hour to be able to get here and get everybody here. So, there you go. All right. Priests known and feared more, even more so than the king's men. They slowly come closer and ride past below you. Maybe eighth of a mile away, not far. Near the edge of bow. She had a thought for for one of you. Who has an extended bow? You see the string along the long bow? Right across yeah, you're like, I mean, there, there's almost a temptation there because they're riding past the extreme edge of your range. And, uh, what's that? Yeah, the black and the roses. Uh, more than that, right? Yes, definitely more than Because I have an additional. About 500, 600. Yeah. Plus, we got an old suit, I'm sure. So my cool range is how much? Because I have a lot of money. Does it look real quick on the positive? On the positive? On the positive? On Alright, so they ride past. You see a moment after they ride, two more men on horseback ride by shortly after them. And they go south to the river, ride across the river, start riding straight up the journey, and straight from where your encampment was. Indeed, they, they seem to know exactly where you were located. If they find the cave, they will be able to find our tracks. Yeah, what are the other ones? Oh, Why is it everywhere in the they keep finding us? First our supplies and our horses. They just seem to know where we are all the time. The arms of sorcery give great insight into the location of foes. Well, we have our own magic. Is there nothing you can do to protect us from even seeing us? Finding us? I don't think so. I believe not. Flight has always been an option. Movement. Okay, they ride, they ride around out of sight now, heading up the river, blocked by the trees. And the river, yes. The Edgar's are split from us, right? Yeah, they already headed down the river. Hope they got one. So he's the only NPC with us right now. And it's suspected near Bobby, after about 20 miles or so, there's a lake and they're going to be able to cross the river, the south side of the river. Uh, I'll actually say south off the road and try to hide in the trees and the beaches and grass. Okay. Um, sometime before the sky lightens. Um, one of the riders comes back um, 
quickly and uh, speaks briefly to the character. The character of Sigmund stop and down. of course, is they started pulling the horses down, trying to get the horses off the team. There's way you can prepare some Well, no, I mean, is it like there's a plan or no chance in this system? I'm just saying cast it, not cast it. I know there's a role now. So far, with that 
Oh, this is split. I mean, he's barely it was like that, 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 uh, that little part. He hasn't, hasn't really made it. It's just obvious that he heard the noise. Uh, yeah, I'm going to cast uh, 66. Uh, oh, that's a good one. Well, I didn't actually roll 66. I mean, well, it's not on a crit, obviously. I'm going to cast a spell on um, here, I think I'm going to <laughs> What'd you get total? Uh, I got a 66. What's your modifiers? That's total, right? I think that's total. That's your roll or with your bonus? That's my bonus, but I'm looking at the crossbow of modifiers. Range? Range modifier? Oh, it's um, actually, I get plus 20 OB because it's up to 50 feet with the crossbow. Okay, so 86. 86. Right. Now the arrow plus twenty, the plus twenty to the to those special arrows goes to what? Just to hit. Oh, whatever you roll yeah, oh, okay. adds to your roll with that arrow. All right, you hit into his shoulder armor. You see the bolt skim through his armor and shoot through it. Yep. He's starting to twist and shoot past him. They obviously hit him, but nothing critical. He st he starts tumbling, obviously intentionally, towards the other side of the road, trying to get away. Um, let me get some other shots up here before you do your thing. Okay. There's a special chart. He nimbly dodges five other arrows. One other manages to scuff in place. Where do I get to go? You can go... What's your um, agility bonus? Oh, what's yours? Uh, I think that, that, isn't that what it was in the range of initiative? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There should be some kind of a mystery so we can I mean, it should have a range. Okay. The duration plus 35. Okay. Uh, there's got to be a range. Which one? Look at the top of the spell. Which one? Oh, yeah. range. Okay. Yeah. Is how far away? It's farther than 55 feet now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, He's moving. I, I, as I recall, I think I prepared the, 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 the you, fired, you fired off. You fired off your ball. That's, that's your, oh, I'm just saying that uh, if you just spend a I'm sorry, you know Mike Wayhawk? No. Oh, see? Nope, fine. Oh, see. So it needs more happy. Yeah, I have any options to be able to see the other two houses. Right, 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 so, it's just gonna look good. Can you know the movie? They were pretty good about that actually. Um, well, what was funny about it was that the American actor trying to do a British accent. It was really artificial. Sometimes they just gave up. They went back to their normal. But uh, it really would have been. No, and then he, I was hearing all the I was hearing all the people go. Yeah. Oh, Tom Babadil. Oh, yes. I don't do You know what? Even reading about him and the culture, he is still such a enigma.